Number two is an actual injury of the rotator cuff. It may seem similar to a bursitis impingement type of scenario with pain, particularly with raising your arm above your head, but a lot of times it has to do with the history and how it happened, the mechanism of injury. So a lot of times when people come in that have rotator cuff problems will come in and they say they were working out at the gym, they were lifting something heavy and they felt a pop or a snap or even had a tearing sensation in their shoulder. After that, they were still functional and the next day they woke up in severe pain and noticed the pain got worse and they were unable to have adequate strength above their head. That, what that usually means is that this rotator cuff, which is in the green right here, is disrupted and you get a tear. Okay? That tear can either be a full thickness tear, meaning all the way through the tendon down to the bone, or it could be a partial tear just involving portion, partial of, uh, part of the tendon. Um, and not necessarily going all the way through the bone. Now, how that gets treated is very different, okay? A partial versus a full thickness tear. And also what we look into, uh, take in consideration is patient's activity, uh, age, um, and their expectations. Uh, if you have a full thickness tear, the problem with the full thickness rotator cuff tears is that they can progressively get worse. They can get larger, particularly if you're doing a lot of activities and you're an active individual. And those tears can progress and propagate. And sometimes they can retract. And that tendon is like a rubber band. Once you snap that tendon off of the bone and it becomes torn, that tendon retracts immediately. And what that means is that you start to lose coverage over that ball. Once that ball loses its coverage from the tendon and it retracts, this muscle over here kind of bunches up and becomes what we call atrophic, meaning it's, it's become fatty infiltrated or become very weak and scar tissue-like. So it becomes very difficult to pull that tendon all the way back down and reattach it back down to the bone if you decided to proceed with surgery to fix it. So there is a window of opportunity when that tendon is very uh, pliable and actually has good excursion and you can actually pull that tendon down and reattach it. And there are also a lot of factors that come into play regarding if you can fix a rotator cuff. And like I mentioned before, um, activity status, age, and also quality of tendon makes a big difference too. And the age of the tear will determine whether or not you're a candidate for having this fixed. Partial tendon tears are another uh, big issue and that, that will be a little bit more subtle than the, the full thickness tears. Those patients can still raise their arm above their head but they may have this chronic dull aching pain particularly when they raise their arm above their head in addition to severe night pain. Night pain is very common in rotator cuff pathology. You may be laying there doing nothing and you're having severe shoulder pain. That is a good indicator that there's something going on with the rotator cuff. A partial tear is when the tear does not go all the way through the tendon and oftentimes a partial tear can actually respond very well to conservative measures like an injection or even physical therapy. So it may, it's very important to determine what type of tear you have. And many times a physician can do that or give you that diagnosis via ultrasound or MRI, depending that, uh, based on that physician's uh, test of choice. And then they will treat you accordingly.